Hello Matrix and welcome to yet another video and we are going to do the paper one of this trial exams 2022 from the Northwest province okay I've just skimmed through this paper and I can tell you it looks like <laughs> on this paper they were at war with the students um, it's not really what I would say is a trial paper this looks like a final exam so to speak but anyway we can take anything and I hope you guys can be transformed to people that can actually handle any challenges put forward by maths so that is the purpose of trying to do these videos every now and then is to actually assist in fortifying your courage as well as your success chances with any paper that may be brought to you so <clears throat> again uh, on the description I will link uh, a video which is a part two so I'm gonna do this in two parts I, I don't think my camera can really hold it so I just want to indulge a little bit to try and explain certain things to you as we go along hoping that of course that will assist you to understand this better uh, so I'm going to do it in two parts. So we'll do question one and question two and three. Then I'll jump to financial maths as well as um, probabilities. I'll just leave the functions section alone so that we can do it in the next video altogether because I just don't want that link to be broken. All right, let's have a look and see what one day Northwest Department Fund under Vase. Hey, hey, Africans, Prati, so you are going to live life with Africans. Of course, you have a copy at sternmorphysics.com. So, if you'd be interested in this paper, please go and have a look. There, you will find the paper. Okay, let me just sit nice and easy so that we can work this thing out properly. All right, guys, so we have the same old question one here. They've already factorized it, so we just do the solutions easily. So we're solving for x at this point. Uh, so we are upon the northwest paper. So let's see. I think I have a, uh, one of my guys are there, so they wrote this paper. So let's see what he was having. Was he having fun at all or was he, <laughs> was he crying? Mm. So we have 3x minus 1 into x plus 2 equal to 0. So once it's in factors like this, we can just make the conclusion that x is equal to a third. Or x is equal to minus 2 of course make a habit I mean this is straightforward but make a habit of double checking if you put a third here the three is cancelled it's going to be 1 minus 1 which is 0 so whatever you do here is going to amount to 0 if you put a minus 2 here you get a 0 here then whatever you multiply with it's going to end up being 0 so it really does work so you get a mark for each of those answers this phone must just not make noise okay I am not interested in the noise some belief though all right 1.1.2 1. 1. what is the story here don't want to sit on these ones this is 5x uh, somebody just made a little chit chit here so it's fine it must have been the student this is 5x squared minus 2 sorry minus 7 x minus 11 equal to 0 and then of course the instruction already says either you complete the square here or you do the general quadratic formula but the easiest is the general quadratic formula so we have 5 x squared minus 7 x minus 11 equal to 0 so what do we have here we know this implies that x is minus b 
plus or minus the root of b squared minus 4ac all of it divide by 2a this is from the general quadratic equation so what is minus b is minus into minus 7 plus or minus the square root of minus 7 squared minus 4 a is 5 c is minus 11 all right so we have 2 into 5 Sometimes to clean it up a bit is better. 7 plus or minus the square root. Let's just do that discriminant nice and easy. So we have 7 squared minus 4 into 5 into minus 11. So this discriminant is 2, 6, 9. Okay, which is, I think it's 13. What is the square root of 2, 6, 9? I think it must be 30. 13, get 13, eh, I know square root, eh, 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 give a little go for poison, I almost fed you poison, guys, okay, I think at this stage we can make our conclusion that x is going to be, let's do it, so I have here 7 plus the square root of 269 divided by 10, so I'm getting 2,34 or x. Of course, you do it to two decimal places, right? Right. So the next one is you just go back to that thing. Don't rub it off. Just take away the minus and put, I mean, the plus and you put the minus. The minus in. Eh, eh, eh. Ay, yan pale. If I know in couple of years, this is minus 0, 0,94. All right, of course, you can test these values by putting them back into that equation. If you get a rounded off number that is 0, then they work. Okay, let's do it. Just for fun. So we have 5 into 2, 2,34. Okay, you see these fancy calculators, man, they make your life a little bit desirable. If you had to really do this, yay. Any other way, I think there was going to be a few screams. A few screams. So look at this. Ish. Yeah, ne? Look at that one. <coughs> You're getting something that is ooh, ooh, very small. Ne? This is very small because this is 0, 0, 0,00. You know? And if you round off that, 2 can be thrown away. So essentially, you are at 0. So it doesn't really do any injustice. So I, you can test the other one. and First of all, correct substitution is important. Those two answers. They were just giving 3 marks. Okay. Mm. Looks like I'm feeling dizzy, man. Why? I just ate. Yeah. Anyway, let's do this 1.1.3. It's our lovely quadratic inequality. Uh, so here it's 1 comma 1 comma 3. This is x squared plus 2x minus 15. Must be greater and equal to 0. Hmm. Okay, that is cool. We can solve this first of all. We imply, can we find factors? Because factors are going to assist us in moving forward. Of course, factors of 15 is 5 and 3. That will give us a 2 when we add them together. This is positive, so this must be positive and that must be negative. That is sorted. So once you get here, you know that this actually tells you a bit about the roots. Okay. So what I do now, I can put my factors x minus 3, x plus 5 on my little taffeli. So and if I solve here, I get minus 5 and 3, right? For those roots, these are your critical values. 
Then you look when is this factor zero mm, at three. Beyond three, let's say a four, you put a four in there, four minus three is a one. So all the other values beyond three will give you a positive answer over there. Once you establish one side is positive, the other one automatically becomes negative. But you double check and say if you put a number less than three, which is say two, two minus three, you get a minus one. Minus five minus three is what? Is minus eight. And minus six minus three is minus nine. So do you see we get negatives on the other side? So the critical point is to try and establish where the, real, the zeros are for each vector. Now here, when it's minus 5, we get a 0, right? Minus 5 plus 5 is a 0. Now, when you're getting a number greater than minus 5, say minus 4, minus 4 plus 5 is just going to be a positive. Even if you put a 3 there, you're going to get a positive. A number more than 3 is going to be positive, right? Once you establish one side as positive, automatically the other side becomes negative. By the way, this is a product in our setup. So we're multiplying the signs Minus times minus is positive. Minus times zero is zero. Minus times plus is minus. Zero times any number is zero. Plus times plus is a plus. So what do we want? We want values where the product is positive. So this means here and there. And in between, never, because it's negative. So we can say, therefore, our x must be less than minus 5. Of course, less than or equal to because we still get 0 there. So the answer is this point here going that way and this point here going that way. Okay. So O x is equal is less than, sorry, greater than or equal to 3. So this is where the solutions that are positive lie. Okay. Of course, some people like to say x is an element of negative infinity going all the way to minus 5, but this minus 5 is included, okay? Union, this is going to be 3, sorry, this is included also, 3 and positive infinity, which is never included. So you can have something like this, but remember, intervallic notation only applies when you have real values, and we know that these are real numbers we're talking about, so we can do it. But if our x was an element of natural numbers, for example, you would never dare to do this, okay? Leave it as inequalities instead. Okay, not a problem. Of course, we are in the teaching mode. If you thought of the parabola itself, what would it look like? You have your origin there, your x-axis there, and your y-axis. So at times, you may feel like the table is just too much for you. But what I like about it is that you don't have to worry about what the graph looks like and everything. If you do it correctly, it always gives you everything that you would draw from the graph. By the way, we know that our a here is greater than 0, right? And it's a 1. So our parabola is a smiling parabola. But now, where is the turning point? Is it to the right of the y-axis or to the left of the y-axis? I mean, this is just being too, too much. You don't need to go to that extent, but let's just do it now. It's going to be minus b, right, over 2a. So minus 2 over 1 is just going to be minus 2. So we know that our turning point is on this side. Where is our y-intercept? It's minus 15. So, obviously, we will turn in this region and then we're saying maybe there's our minus 15 here. I'm just being silly guys. You don't have to put these roots as they look. Okay, this is minus 5 if I like and then that is a 3. Okay, so I'm just being, you know, myself. Nothing serious here. fence. <laughs> All right, I, it doesn't really matter, so I'm just trying to draw an accurate. Is it accurate or is it accurate? 
number e into one. So this is minus five by weight. This is three. Of course, if you, you draw the graph, you need to show these intercepts here. I don't know why that one is not showing. Minus five and three. Okay. This is minus 15. I mean, you have to really show us that this is the graph we are talking about. I don't like things that are not really cool. And you know that your axis of, of symmetry would be somewhere there. But that one is not important at this point. So, when is our graph above the y-axis? In this region. And in that region. But in between these two values, it is below so this is incorrect so do you see that part is eliminated those parts are promoted already without even seeing the graph you already have an idea what you are dealing with and then of course from this you can draw that conclusion or this conclusion so you can do your number line I'm not gonna go into that this is more of a detailed number line and also this one is more of a graphical number line but the other one is just a simple number line Okay, but you learn in grade nine. Okay, uh, not a problem, guys. We are getting how many marks he saw? Four marks, okay? Getting a mark for that and that, of course. Yeah, well, they decided to give a lot more, so maybe for those factors as well. Or, yeah, maybe whatever tool you used, maybe they will award you marks for it. I don't know. Not a problem, we keep moving guys. We don't want to have our time child unnecessarily. Now, simultaneous equations, they never leave you. You just have to deal with them, okay? They are there, you can't choose. So we are given x plus 2y equals 3. This is equation 1. This implies that x is going to be equal to 3 minus 2y, which we can say it's 1a. Okay. Then the other one is x squared minus y squared equals x plus y. Okay, it's some quadratic of some kind. More of a circle, if you ask me, with the center somewhere. Well, we don't know. Okay. <laughs> Now you can tell that this one is complicated, so you can make this one equation two. So you say put or substitute one a in two. What do we get? We get where you see x, you're going to put three minus two y, then squared minus y squared equals where you see x, you put. 3 minus 2y plus y. Okay, so I fold this one out. Get 9. 3 by 2 is 6, and that by 2 is minus 12y plus 4y squared. Okay. Okay, minus y squared equals 3 minus 2y plus y. Okay. We are getting somewhere. So 4y squared minus y squared, we're getting 3y squared. And then, what do we do? The next one, we're taking this side. It's going to be minus y. When we take minus y and transpose it to this side, it becomes a plus y. So we get a minus 11y. I hope I'm doing it right. So this is when we deal with these ones. And um, we're going to deal with the numbers. When we bring in 3, we get minus 6. Sorry, plus 6. Equal to 0. And then we try and factorize this thing. There's a method, PAF method. If you can't really deal with this, but you don't have a choice, at some point it's going to be like that. So we have 3y in that one. So now we want to get 11. So we know that this is positive, this is negative. Both these brackets are negative. Now how do we handle this? Factors of 6 is 3 and 2. Okay. 
So we know that 3 by 3 is 9 and then plus 2 is going to be 11. So we can put 3 here and 2 over there. Then we can say, therefore, y is going to be equal to 2 over 3. Oops, or y is equal to 3. So used to x. Okay, this is when we equate each one of these factors to 3. So let's say sub the y values in 1a. What do we get? We know that x is going to be equal to 3 minus uh, 2 into uh, 2 over 3 or x is going to be equal to 2a when 3 minus 2 into 3. Okay, therefore x, okay, maybe let's say implies for now and then therefore, you can't have a lot of this repeats, therefore, therefore is a conclusion, so yeah. Then we have here, this is 3 times 2, which is 4, this is 4 over 3. And you multiply the 3 there, 6, no, 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 it's 9, minus 4, which is 5 over 3. Okay, or x is equal to, this one is 3 minus 6, which is going to be minus 3. Right, so you take this into the simple equation, you try and get it done. So, let's try this one in equation 1a. So we know that x is going to be 5 over 3. What happens here when we put 2 over 3? So this is 4 over 3. Yeah, actually we get the same. So it works. So it's done. It's literally done. It's literally done. Because whatever we got here, we are still getting over there. So, yeah, simultaneous equations are just that easy. I'm not going to go where the marks are. A little bit nonsensical how I can show you where the marks are, but obviously, the values give you four marks already. So, here you can say for all your substitutions, you get one mark, and here also for the substitution, here you get your mark, and in essence, you have your six marks. Goodness, I said I was not doing it. Do you know what is called obsessive compulsive disorder? This is exactly what is, is going on, 1.3. I have an obsession and a compulsion. Because I was trying to run away from this thing. But it just brought me back to itself. Okay, guys, let's let's just not waste time here. I like to waste time when it's not necessary. So what we've got here is a two, sorry, f of x equals three x minus x squared divided by two to exponent x minus four. Now the question says determine the values of x for which f of x is equal to zero. So of course the one way you want to think about it is that you need to do real values here or you want real number solutions so that is your key this is going to be both rational and irrational okay but it's not about unreal once it becomes unreal this is when you're not gonna be happy so when would we have f of x equal to zero you know that the numerator has to be zero right because zero divided by any number on the denominator is going to be zero so basically, we, we, we have to solve the numerator. Okay, so basically, we know that for f of x to be equal to 0, it is such that 3x minus x squared is equal to 0. That is the first step. Then you just solve this thing. Uh, here we have a highest common factor which is x into 3 minus x equal to 0. Then what do you do? You equate each factor to 0. Therefore x should be 0 or x should be 3. Yes. 
Now, you know that if you can put, say, 0 there, that whole numerator becomes 0. Therefore, 0 divided by any number is 0. Then you put a 3 in there, so you get a 9 here. Then 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 9 is 0. So effectively, it holds. Okay. Wonderful. And then, how many marks are they giving? The 3 marks. So I do feel like that is good. Uh, and then for these two answers here, because they said x values, determine x values. So that is where the three marks come from, 1.3.2. Now, we have a, another question. It says, when is f of x undefined? That means unreal. Okay. When is this unreal? <laughs> so to speak we're just slashing the real values there when is this one unreal it's when the denominator is zero isn't it because if you say any number divided by zero it's undefined so that is really what we want okay so we can say f of x is undefined when the denominator 2 to exponent x minus 4 is equal to 0. Then, of course, we solve this, which implies that we have 2 to exponent x equals 4. It also implies that we have 2 to exponent x equals 2 squared. That is your baseline. And then, of course, if you have powers on either side of the equation, when they have the same basis, you simply take the exponents. So that means x is 2. And then, of course, you can tell that if you put 2 there, you get a 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. And that becomes undefined. Easy stuff. Then 2 marks. Great. So we're getting a mark for this. And probably for saying that must be equal to 0. We are sort. We are sorted. So these are very simple questions. But do you realize these are functions, guys? You are being asked functions in question 1. I always told you, question one, there's always this last question which can be anything. But the manner in which they ask that question, it is to seek an understanding of these particular topics. And, you know, the whole maths in reality. So, it's more like NBT, you know, where you probably would not be asked things directly, but they would rather seek to understand whether you understand the implications of a lot of things. Which is, I think is fine, man. This is good. This is good. But this is more like a test for the final. <laughs> Honestly. But ugh, this one is not too big, though. It's grade, grade 11 stuff, essentially. It's not really grade 12 stuff. So, ugh, it's fine. Next one. They're saying, when is this little thingy here less than or equal to zero? All right. So, we have an inequality that bringing it back again. Now, this one is going to be a problem. It's more of a higher grade question, you know. But I will show you what is what. So let's do this one. 1.1.3. So we are given that we have to determine the x values for which f of x is equal to 0. This implies that 3x minus x squared over... 2 to exponent x minus 4 must be less than or equal to 0. Obviously, what I do here, I just factorize the numerator, so I get x into x. Yay, 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 soon more shall win. 3 minus x all over. This one you can't do anything about. It's 2 to exponent x minus 4 less than or equal to 0. So when I have factors here, I just do my magical table. So I will have, at the top, I have two factors, 3 minus x. And then the denominator is 2 to exponent x minus 4. Please don't mix things. That's just the thing about this table. You don't want to mix things. You want to handle everything cautiously. But at the same time, you can do your own magic. 
so I'm going to have to think about three solutions here all right let's think about these three solutions of course these three solutions first can come from the numerator those are the critical values right can either be zero or it can be three ne? right and then here what can we have when we equate this to zero we get what we get x is equal to two ne? we've already done it above so we're going to have zero two and three so zero is the first one two is the next one three is the last one okay zero for this one that is alone then three for that one and then two for this one but on the table you put them in ascending order from left to right So don't make a meal of jumping around if you start not putting things in order it defeats you okay so let's deal with this one this one is definitely zero at zero more than zero is always going to be positive isn't it great and then less than zero is going to be negative then what about this one it's zero here when x is more than um, say three that means it's 4 so 3 minus 4 is negative so all values in this factor are gonna be negative beyond 3 what about below 3 we put 2 there 3 minus 2 is a positive number and then 2 3 minus 2 is a positive number okay and then anything in between here say for example we have a 1 so it's gonna be negative still oh sorry positive because 3 is a bigger number there then when it's 0 it's still negative 3 minus 0 is positive what am I saying here when born I'm starting to make errors so that's a plus say it's a negative number say minus 1 3 minus minus 1 is gonna be 3 plus 1 it's still positive so you see if you establish one side as negative the other one should be positive but double check because there's usually some easy errors and then this one when is it zero can this thing be ever zero I yes yes it can be zero because when x is 2 this is going to be 4 4 minus 4 is 0 so it's gonna be 0 here then what happens when you put a value more than 2 let's say for example a 3 you put a 3 there it becomes an 8 8 minus 4 is a positive number so we're going to have positive values here throughout and then we say what happens when this value is less than 2 say 1 2 minus 1 I mean sorry 2 minus 4 is, is a negative alright and then you put any other smaller value you get a smaller value so you're subtracting a bigger number so this is what happens it becomes negative like that so once your table is sorted then you do the division based on what you have first you do the product for the first two then that product you're going to divide by this last row here so a plus times a I mean a negative times a positive is a negative negative divide by negative is a positive 0 multiplied by anything is 0 0 divided by any number is 0 okay then plus times a plus I mean plus multiplied by another plus yes is a plus and then a plus divided by negative is a negative 2 sorry a plus here multiplied by another plus is a plus plus divide by zero this is undefined so you can just say ud there so that is not defined and then we come here and say what happens here um, plus times a plus is a plus right right and then um, what did I say plus multiplied by a plus is a plus divide by a plus is a plus okay plus times a zero is a zero divided by any number is zero here now plus div multiplied by negative is a negative negative divided by a plus is a negative now what do we want we want this to either be zero or less than zero so where do we see this this is already positive here so it's out 
but we do have zero and it's included and we're going towards this side but this one is not included okay so that one is not included because it's undefined too and then this is already not acceptable but zero is included and going that way we're getting a negative product so we can conclude that therefore our x must be less than 2 greater than or equal to 0 or our x must be greater than or equal to 3 okay so that is clearly how you can solve this thing of course you get two marks for that and then you get one mark for that one so this is where the three marks comes from of course you have to do a bit of work but I think it's worth it now what else would you have done guys so let's say you don't like my table there. okay let me not call it my table because it's not my table <laughs> it's Mr. Laridon Laridon is it Laridon or Laridon but the guy who wrote classroom mathematics so that book the pink one uh, classroom mathematics standard 9 and 10 yeah, I used those books so it is that guy who showed me that table so ever since I learned it back in 2004 in my grade 11 it stuck and I started testing it everywhere you know I have a tendency to be obsessed with things as you can see so I try everything that is in my power so I suggest you do the same because it simplifies your life when you get stuck so let's see I mean this is a parabola right you can do the graph so graphical representation of you know algebraic expressions is a mathematical tool that is to be looked at okay let's see if we drew this graph of this parabola we saw that the intercepts are going to be 0 and 3 so the intercepts for the parabola are here but we saw that our a is negative so if a is negative we have an ugly face or a grumpy parabola so we expect this thing to be like that again you look at the coefficient it's positive but you multiply by negative so our axis of symmetry is going to be at 1,5 so to speak hmm? yeah it's going to be at 1,5 somewhere there but we really are not interested in that but yeah I'm already doing it there's no constant so that means this serves as also the y intercept so this is what our parabola is going to do of course the intercepts are critical values so you cannot do without them but the rest is not important because we're looking for x values that wangwa wangwishisha wanitwa wanitwa kahle you hear me very well okay guys this is just pushing my luck of course i mean don't have to really do this thing but i can assure you these solutions become a horrible situation if you don't have a plan now let's think about the next one this is an exponential graph that is shifted downward to minus four right right so if we assume this is our minus four e so okay let's just do this one that becomes the asymptote ne? yes that becomes our asymptote because that is our horizontal asymptote okay you need to know exponential graphs and see them when even you're not in the section okay so we can say this is minus 4 over here where this asymptote is but let's look at a what is the a value here it's greater than 0 so it's 1 so we expect our graph to be above that asymptote so meaning this graph is going to be above this line okay first of all what are the x-intercepts well the x-intercepts is when this thing is 0 ne? and when it's 0 we found 2 to be the intercept so they said this is 1,5 so maybe 2 is here okay 
So it's going to cut there. What about the y-intercept? y-intercept means x must be 0. So this is 2 minus 4, which is, uh, sorry, 0, which becomes 1. 1 minus 4 is minus 3. So at minus 3 over here, it cuts. But I mean, you're not interested in the y values per se, but uh, I'm just trying to be complete. So we have a situation like that. So again, guys, this is key. Know these things. Because, I mean, once you know these things, maths becomes really a bore. Because I feel like they ask it in the simplest of ways. Because now this doesn't look too fancy or difficult once you know what you're dealing with. Of course, we can name this thing that f of x is made up of two graphs, essentially. So when you have this expression, it means you have two graphs. You see how lovely this thing is? Maybe we can call now f of x is made up of g of x plus, say, not plus, but and. Um, um, yeah. But these are the graphs. Let's just leave this alone and not name them. Now let's see what is going on here. Ne? Let's see what is going on. Honamona. Honamona. So you know that this is the origin, right? The origin is a zero. Let me show it here in this corner. Okay, the origin is not there. Now let's look at these graphs and see if we can find these solutions. When is f of x acceptable? It's any other time except when this denominator function is at zero. Right. There, at zero, this one is zero over here. Whereas this one is a positive value. So no matter what you're doing, can I say positive value divided by zero is undefined. So this portion here is not to be a solution for our f of x because this cuts the x-axis. And therefore that means its y value is zero. Okay. So that one is not acceptable. We know we are happy about it. And then we are saying now, when is this less than zero? This division. So you have a positive value here. Divide by a negative value here. Okay? All the way. So all the way until this zero here of the origin. Okay? So between this origin and that point where we have 2, we have a situation where we're dividing a positive by negative. And that gives us 0. And then, of course, this one is 0 there, and that one is 0 there. And these solutions are included. Why? Because this division is 0 divided by any value, which is minus 3 here, is 0. So 0 is a real value, so it's acceptable. So we know that, well, our x now lies between these two, where 0 is included, but 2 is not included. So you can write there that x must be less than 2, but greater than or equal to 0. Okay? But what happens beyond 0? Let's use this color. Beyond 0, this function is negative, and this function is negative. A negative divided by another negative is a positive. So we don't want that. So we this side is not acceptable as solutions. Uh, what happens this side here? Beyond this 2. Okay? Beyond this 2, we have a positive here and another positive over there. So positive divided by positive is a positive, but we want something less than 0, so we don't want it. But past, this happens all the way until this point here, which is 3 forgot to indicate that 3. So this 3 here, we can tell that this is 0 and that one is positive. Now, 0 divided by any value is 0, so this is acceptable. And then what happens? So that means we can take that value. What happens beyond? That is still positive, but this one is negative. Now, a positive divided by negative is a negative, so that means this solution is acceptable. So that is when we say or x must be greater than or equal to 3. So you see, you can have a graph 
and it can help you and do you see this part here is also very important because you see this table just captured it without even knowing what this dra uh, this graphs look like all right guys at the end of the day you are walking away with 23 marks which i hope you did those of you who wrote this paper okay so not a problem guys we're just trying to be comprehensive now because you are going to be facing your finals very soon and this is at the level of the finals so to speak okay um let's keep going guys the sum of a series of sorry the sum of a series okay is given by the following formula they don't tell us which series it is okay but when you see sn and sn is quadratic what does it tell you this must be an as okay again why do i know this well whenever the formula for the sum is a quadratic isn't it you saw it guys and two you saw that each time you do the sum of an arithmetic series it gives you a quadratic when you're doing the general formula in terms of the sequence or the series that you have so again i think i've done a video boring as it may look and long as it may look as well but it carries all the things that you need because at times you may find the first question asking you which series is that and then what are you going to do and i have to first say s1 and then you look for the terms and then you add and then you, yeah you see you've been in trouble so you need a bit of information that helps you through a lot of difficulties all right guys let's not waste time it says now calculate the sum of the first 10 terms this is very easy so we basically want s10 so we're doing question two so question 2.1 we are told that that one sorry guys for the interruption someone is trying to call me but i so it's 3n squared plus 2n okay so it is easy when we have this one 2.1.1 we just want s10 s10 is going to be equal to 3 into 10 squared plus 2 into 10 so this one is as straightforward as that okay so what we got here is uh what can you do what can you do there is three to ten squared plus two into uh ten ne. ten is going to be three hundred and twenty so that is as easy as that so substitution and the answer you get your marks okay so the next one here is uh what are you going to do now uh, is to say okay calculate the first three terms of the series now that's gonna be a bit of work um so 2.1.2 First of all, you know that T1 is going to be equal to S1. Ne? I, there's no questions about it. If you take the sum of the first term alone, you only have the first term, isn't it? It's logical. But if you don't understand this one, you can go and check there on that little playlist that I created, which is not really fancy. It's not that interesting. It's boring at most. I mean, it's boring at most or at its best. But some boring things can prove to be golden over time so try not to ignore things forever or else you're going to wish you had paid some attention so this is 3 into 1 squared plus 2 into 1 so this is basically 3 plus 1 sorry plus 2 which is 5 so we know that t1 is 5 okay that is easy and then let's look for t2 maybe let's just say this is a I mean we're just trying to be organized here 
Then what do we know? We know that T2, ne? T2 is going to be what? Mm. T2 is going to be S2 minus S1, I think. Am I right? I think again. Is it S2 minus S1? Some of the first two terms. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be S2 minus S1. Because remember, if you added the first two terms, that would be the sum, which is S2. Then if you take away the first term, then you remain with the term 2. So we are in a good position here. We are in a good position. Hey, these people are just troubling me now. What, did, what do they want? Just a moment, guys. Just a moment. Just a moment. Um, all right. So, um, just got a bit interrupted. I'm sorry, guys. So this is going to be 3 into 2 squared plus 2 into 2 minus S1. We already found out that it's 5, so I'm not going to write S1 there anymore. So, what is that? This is 4 by 3, that is 12. Ne? 12 plus 4 is 14. Then 14 minus 5 is what? Mm, it's 9. So this is 9, okay? Are you happy, you guys? So I hope you are, because if you're not happy, because of fee walab. Okay. Um, let's just be sure, guys, if I'm doing the right thing here. This is 4, 12. Ne? 12 plus 4 is 16. 16 minus 5. Hmm? Mm, mm, mm. 16 minus 5 must be 11. Aye. Well, now, so I can't make it. I can't make it. 11, man. Ach, doch. This guy. Balanches on Kala, I can't. That's a 10 destructive telephone call. And there's a message. Got in two million message back. Can you manage a buff weight? Nina Kal. Okay, so just sorted that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I don't even know how to pause this thing and do my thing and then continue. So, see, totally illiterate guy. I'm totally illiterate, but for today, and as you ban a chase was immortal by strutting, as you see, there's no technology. T3 is going to be what? It's going to be S3. Minus S2. So I've taught I've taught you guys this thing on that video. So if you don't get it, try it and then you'll see it is that. Alright, so S3 is going to be 3 into 3 squared plus 2 into 3 minus. Now S2, it's a pity we didn't show it here. It's 16. I'm just gonna put it there, but maybe you should do this one in two steps so that it's clear what happened. Because if you don't, someone is gonna say you stole it from your friend, you copied. Hey, so show things so that somebody understands where they come from. And then what is that? This is nine, nine by three, this is 27. 27 plus six is 33. Nah. And then 33 minus 16 is what? Is 17. Okay, not a problem. So there we are, guys. We've done it. So they said find, um, they said calculate the first three terms of the series. So I do think this is one mark. And maybe this one is another mark. And then this one is another mark. They were giving four marks. So where is the other mark? 
Where is the other one? Well, 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 well. Well, well, well. Maybe we can say the S2 here. Yeah, I think the S2 is important, so we can give the extra mark there on the S2. So this is our four marks. Yeah, got distracted. Got distracted. Looks like there's something serious. I must to can understand and attend to if that is the correct English, but I know it's incorrect, so don't say it. Now they are saying, uh, is the given series arithmetic or geometric? Already, man, from just this formula, there's no questions about it. But hey, you may be in trouble, the quadratic, but if it is SNI, the sum that is quadratic is always AS. So I won't even bother myself, but you may want to bother. So this is arithmetic. Okay, a tool in maths or a form of maths, arithmetic. So it's not geometric, but again, you can check here, guys. Um, between 17 and um, 11, you have what? Six. Ne? And then between uh, what? 33, sorry, between, did I say? Between 17 and 11, you've got 6. Between 11 and 5, you've got 6. So the common difference is um, 6. So you can even use your newly found sequence to decide. Or you can just take it from that formula. If you see Sn and it's quadratic, that is arithmetic sequence. Okay, so some things are just as easy as that. And I say if the last term is 161, calculate the number of terms in the series. Okay, great. Now we need to put the series in its order. So this is uh, 2.1.4. So we know that the AS is like this. Remember series, there's pluses. So there's 5 plus 11 plus 17 plus dash dash until the very last term that they're telling us is 161 okay so what do we know we know that the d here is going to be 11 minus 5 which is 6 okay just show it a little bit then you can say tn is equal to 161 which implies that a plus n minus 1 into d is equal to 161. And then what is a is 5 plus n, we don't know, we're looking for it, d is 6, because 161. And then we have again 5, we sort this thing out, in fact we can just take the 5 away already, so we say we have 6 into n minus 1, equals 161 minus 5 is what is 156 then we can divide by 6 so I'm just trying to avoid the quadratic here or an unnecessary number of multiplications let's just try and finish it up here so we're going to have n minus 1 equals uh, that is 26 right therefore n is 27 okay so that means there are 27 terms in this series not a problem so how many marks was that um, three marks okay I think here the first thingy is to establish that this guy is the then the correct substitution here at this point and then the answer that is the one, that is the one, that is the one. Okay, let's do a little bit more, a little bit more. Let's do a little bit more. Now the next step is to say a convergent geometric series. So they're telling us this is a sum to infinity. Okay, the sum to infinity is 18. And the sum of the first four terms 
S4 is 130 over 9. Calculate the value of the constant, the ratio. So we're going to have to sweat a little bit. Do you see there's a bit of a similarity in this question? We did a question similar to this one in the easy paper. So they give you stories. You have to find equations, simultaneous equations. So if you guys have been following that video, not that I'm trying to nag you guys or anything but those who have been watching those videos you may have seen that video and you want to watch those videos trust me they don't look fancy they don't look reassuring at all but you'll be surprised when you look at these questions if you have been going through these papers and maybe found some struggles and you look at those videos we'll see that esan esan Okay, now we have a convergent series, the sum to infinity, so we have S to infinity is 18. That is given. And then we are told S4 is equal to 130 over 9. Okay, so we're looking for the constant ratio. Constant ratio. All right. So this is fine. So this is all given information. So what do we know? We know that if sum to infinity is 18, this means that a over 1 minus r is 18 over 1. Right. And then what do we do here? We just cross multiply. So it follows that A is going to be 18 into 1 minus R. Okay. Happy. Very happy. We can make this one equation 1 at this point. Or you can see that equation 1, 1A one doesn't really matter. Now the second equation, we are told that, well, S4 is equal to 130 over 9. This follows that we have what is sum in a geometric series by the way you know very well that the constant ratio if it is convergent r for a convergent series r must be less than one but greater than one minus one so meaning r is not one it's a small value right so you use this other formula so sum is what is a into 1 minus r to n all over 1 minus r is equal to 130 over 9 okay not a problem so this formula is important I mean little pieces of information they will help you along the way so you can see that we want r so we don't want a so a from above is 18 into 1 minus r this is multiplied by 1 minus r to the exponent n. Oh, I forgot. This is 4. Yeah. Because we said s4. So n becomes 4. So we put a 4 there. 1 minus r equals 130 over 9. And what do we do here? We can see that this guy and that guy, when we have factors, they quickly eliminate. And then we can see that, well, if we want to thrive here, we're going to have 18 into 1 minus r to the exponent 4 equals 130 over 9. Now, what do we need to do, guys? Obvious. Divide by 18 there and then divide by 18 over 1. Then that one goes, so we have 1 minus r to the exponent 4. I'm just dragging, but you can see how things get worked out. It's just an exercise right now. So 130 over 9 times 1 over 18. All right, so this is fine. Um, I don't know why I'm taking forever here. There's no need, you know. So this is 130 over 18 by 9 is 162. All right. So this is still over 1. So 
um, no 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 we don't need this we don't need this one you can already see that this is a proper fraction uh, fraction right because we have a 130 there over 162 so this is going to be less than 1 so you can just do the transposing if we transpose r to the other side we get positive r to exponent 4 we transpose that it's going to be 1 minus 130 over 162 which implies that r to exponent 4 is equal to let's just do that one 1 minus um, 130 divided by 162 I'm getting 16 over 81 okay now you know how to do exponents so this is r to exponent 4 if you want this to exponent 4 this is basically uh, 16 is 2 to exponent 4 so it's going to be 2 81 is 3 to exponent 4 this is going to be 3 and then all of this you just put to exponent 4 then you can say therefore r is going to be now always with even exponents be it a square or any even exponent 6 8 whatever you always will consider the pluses and the minuses so it's going to be plus once you have the same exponents you take the bases r is going to be plus or minus 2 over 3 okay that's the answer so always 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 don't be happy because remember this r is an element of real values it can take negatives it can take positives but n cannot take negatives it's a set of natural numbers so you see there's a bit of a mix masala there a salad so to speak but you understand what is going on here so you got in, you, you are getting six marks hmm. okay i would give you a mark for getting to this statement and then the substitution here is really mark worthy and then of course these two solutions are important both plus and minus and where else can i be very friendly where 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 ah uh, one away maybe for this conversion one mark so we have five and where else what was the other step that was important uh, maybe for formulating this equation here was kind of important so I don't know this six marks when the thing is so long and complicated sometimes where the marks are it's a little bit difficult to follow so you may want to check the actual memo for it okay but the idea is just to give you where you should bank marks I don't know why is this thing doing that. Come on, camera man. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You're not doing this to me now. Okay, guys, let's do question three. Question three or three or the rest. Okay, so let's see what is the story here. Now they're saying black and white blocks are used to create patterns. The first three patterns are shown below. All right, there is the pattern one, pattern two, pattern three. Then you see here there's one, two, three, four white ones. Then there's one, two, three, four, five black ones. And then how many white ones here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten white ones. Okay, maybe let's do say ten. W there, how many blacks? One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six blacks there. Then there was what? Four whites. There was five blacks. So the blacks are increasing by one, where the whites are increasing by six. Ne? From four to ten, six. Then how many blacks are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there's 7 blacks. White is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So there's 18 whites. 
plex is 7. So we sorted. We understand what is going on. It says now write down the number of black blocks in each pattern. The number of black blocks in each pattern. Okay, fine. That's a very simple question there. 3.1. Uh, so we can just say pattern one. There is what five black blocks. Okay. Then pattern two has six black blocks hmm. and pattern 3 has 7 black tired of writing this black 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 thing here all right um ah yeah, i'm black i'm black i'm black i'm black okay 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 <laughs> So is that what they want? Uh, okay, so write down the number of players. Yeah, that is the one. That is the one. So you're getting one mark for this whole thing. What a waste of time. Why Okay, let's check this one. Um, pattern one. Okay, there are saying here. Okay, let's check this one. Write down the formula of the number. Write down the formula of the number of black blocks that will be used in pattern N. Okay, so great stuff. So we want to just check these things out. Um, we want to check these things out. Uh, what is that? What is that? Okay, of course, this thing is a sequence of some sort. Ne? Uh, so the sequence of the black blocks, we can just say sequence of the black blocks is like this is five Going to six going to seven going to whatever But now what sequence do they form you can tell that there's a constant difference of one Okay in each instance, so this is basically an AS okay if it is an AS, they are saying write down the formula for the number of blocks for the pattern N. Okay, so in any case, um, what we know here is TN. TN is A plus N minus 1 times D, which is going to be 5 plus N minus 1 into 1 which is 5 plus n minus 1, which is n plus 4. So that is the one. So they said write down, of course. So all you're going to do here, they said p pattern n. Pattern n, you can say tn or pn is up to you. Since we're dealing with patterns, you can say pn. Therefore, pattern n is going to come out like so. They said write down, scrape. Don't show us how you worked it out. So you do this in your RW. All you want there is this one. Don't show us all of this. They are not interested. So they're giving you one mark, which is again another waste of time because you can't just write it down. Or maybe you can. Because you will see here, there's another way. Just show you for the sake of enrichment. Since we're already wasting time anyway. So this is the common difference is one so you can already say here in terms of y equals mx plus c what is constant is the difference so the difference is already one so you know that here we know that y is tn is going to be equal to x plus c essentially uh, plus c maybe you can just put n in there instead of x because n, the coefficient of n is 1 here, so n is the variable, so it's n plus c. Now, what do you do? You'll be like, well, I know for a fact that t1 is 5. 
Ne? You can decide. Tn means term number. So you know that T1, which is 1, is equal to 5 plus C. Therefore, C is going to be equal to... Uh, you, you transpose that one to that side, it becomes a minus 4. Huh? What did I write here? Why is it put, why is it coming out like that now? Says ya kaba na ge manch. Ang sa chabuli ge manch. Why is my C becoming a minus four now? Ah 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 ah. Hii ni nama toti to yam sa sabi ng kagsagang kag. Kobi ang mosha. Because finally po me le into pen. Finally, pumu plus four. Jengo be pumi le la pan. Why nga sa pumi nje? Hey, ya bona ge. Into this nge si zi nje si atina. Diang tina. Oh no, I made a mistake. Ba fuet. That's an error. See, sometimes to try and teach things. You teach your own things and then things start to get wrong. So we know that Tn is going to be equal to N plus C, right? Tn is the actual value of the term. The N is that one. So what is Tn here? Is 5 equals 1 plus C because that's T1. The 1 goes to the N. Tn is the value of the first term, yeah. Now you are talking sense, therefore C is going to be 4. Even if you put 6 as your Tn and then you put a 2, two 6 minus 2 is a 4. Therefore you can say Tn is equal to N plus 4. So you see you can just do it by understanding a straight line equation and then treating this as some co sort of uh, coordinates. Okay, this and its position, they are coordinates of one another. Well, they are coordinates, they, they, they belong in the same bracket. All right, guys, I was just being silly here. There was no need to go to this extent, so. 3.3, .3. what do they want? Determine the formula for the number of white blocks in pattern N. Okay, now, what do we see here? It's jumping from four by six and then from 10 to 18 by 8 so it's like 6 8 you know you can tell that there's a 2 that is hidden somewhere so in essence this is quadratic let's just try and see what is the difference between these two 10 minus uh, sorry 18 minus 10 is 8 and then 10 minus 4 is 6 and between the two we have a 2 there right right so that means uh, yeah, yeah. In challenge, in challenge, in jengo bin chalo. Ken tuan tuin. All right. So it looks like it's quadratic, buffet. So at this point we don't have much. So I will stick with that one and say this one must be our constant difference. Okay. Now they want the general formula for the quadratic, basically. So we can say now the pattern of white blocks is like this one. It's in the sequence 4, 10, 18. And then if we do the first difference, going to get 6 and 8. And then we get a 2 here for the second differences. Alright, we don't really see more, but I would have loved if they gave us more so that we can tell that this is going to be in that manner. But then we can't tell at this point. But yeah, it's fine. I think it's quadratic like this. We can accept that there is something going on in here. Because if we... If we look at this one and say, fine, if we took 4 
and then we add 6 and we add the 2 um, it gives us what 18 mm -hmm. or we say this plus that gives us that which is 10 then this plus that gives us that which is 18 so there must be a 2 here yeah yeah uh, I'm not too sure though could be wrong could be right but let's just go with the flow what else is there so we know that 2a is going to be equal to 2 therefore a is 1 we also know that 3a plus b is equal to 6 which is the first differences so we have 3 into 1 plus b is 6 therefore b is 3 then we know that a plus b plus c is going to be equal to 4 the very first term then we have 1 plus 3 plus c is 4, therefore c is 0. So we know that therefore our tn for these white ones is going to be n squared plus 3n. And that's it. So they are giving us 3 marks. So of course we are getting a mark here. And then a mark for a. A mark for b. B should have been four marks so to speak but uh, whatever man three marks okay looks like I'm getting a little fried I didn't want to waste time but it's happening all the time and I don't like it okay now it says uh, calculate how many white blocks will be in a pattern with 32 black blocks hmm how many white blocks will be in a pattern with 32 black blocks okay now first of all we can tell that we were, we were dealing with a one-to-one -one type of a ratio so we need to find the number of terms in this black block pattern first then that number of terms is going to be the term number here and then from that term number we can then determine the actual value of that term <laughs> easy stuff easy stuff easy stuff so uh, what we have here is 3.5 3.5 is broken down like this we know that tn is equal to 35 for the black blocks okay and we know that the tn for them was uh, what was that one n plus 4 okay so this means uh, n plus 4 is 35 32 goodness what am i doing 32 okay therefore our n is going to be 32 minus 4 that is 28 ne that's 28 so that means there's 28 uh, number of terms I mean patterns that is the pattern number so this is good because that is going to be the same number for our lovely little thing there you know that's gonna be our little thingy tingy 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 uh, hey I jumped a question that's why I'm uh, I jumped a question I'm surprised hey yeah 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 quit the game don't count up pendulism column Actually, this is 3.4. So that's why I need Dermak Orange. Actually, I jumped a question, but anyway, let's continue. Now, let's continue here. So we know that there are 28 terms. Therefore, we're going to say here Tn on the other side for the white ones is n squared plus 3n. This is going to give us uh, what? So we can say now t28 basically is going to be 28 squared plus 3 into 28. Ne, yeah. 
So Connie's in this chunagela. Some things happened that were not supposed to happen. Anyway, twenty-eight squared plus three into twenty-eight is eight six eight. So there's gonna be eight six eight of these things here. Ne. So that is the essence of the story. Then how many marks there? Three marks. So I think getting that N is important, the substitution and the answer. Three marks. So there's a question I didn't answer here. Let's look into this one. I didn't answer this one. It says how many white blocks will be used to create the fourth pattern? Which is the pattern just after that. Okay. Now, this is a serious question, you know. Yeah, how many white blocks will be used to create the fourth pattern? So this is where our problems began, which is why I couldn't answer this. Let me see here, did I write this correctly? Uh, yeah, this is four, two, four, five, seven, nine, eleven. Actually, this is even eleven, it's not ten. Yeah, yeah, dog. I was wondering what is going on here. So two, four, five, seven, nine, ten. Yeah, it's ten, man. Can you just call this a lango? Eh, this is such a. Now, how many white blocks used to create the fourth pattern? So, how are we going to do this one, guys? Yo, 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 yo. This one is going to do some number on the two of you and me. But in any case, let me see, what is the relationship of that? Uh, yeah, can I answer this one? Yeah. How many white blocks will be used to create the fourth pattern? How do I know? There's no knowing, is it? But of course we may have to use the black ones. The black ones, if they are seven, then they are going to be eight. Ne? The black ones are going to be eight. gonna be eight I'm trying to think now how would we make this relationship how do I get the next one I wanna get more and click on it as well how will I know how will I know I know there's gonna be seven blacks not a problem the black ones are gonna be seven but how do I work out the other ones. Eh, 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 eh. Hey, God. I don't know a fuet. I don't know about fuet. But since I decided I'm going to say this is quadratic, I'm going to use my constant difference and say, here is what I did here, which already I was on another question. I'm going to say here, I seem to see that what is happening here from 4 to 10 I added 6 nah. then here there's gonna be a 2 here sorry the 2 must be between this term and the next one then the next one should be 10 right to make it a 2 and then uh, that 10 goes to the next one there. 18 plus 10 is 28. I don't know if there's a way of working this one out. I'm a bit lost now because I just did, I didn't focus. So I'll just say 28. I just say 28, of course, using this technique here. 
that's if the we are correct. I mean, we already created something that is probably not true. We'll see. We'll see when we check on that memo. It's not a big deal. Okay. Uh, let's just move. Let's just move. Let's just move. Maybe let's double check on this one. There is a memo anyway for this paper already. It's just that I am a very stupid person on it. I'm very stupid in that. Um, I have the luxury of looking, but I don't. Why? Why ki tochara? I can say the linna one is. Eh. Which over it was so good like in Twiggy Rata. Gauswitz, Gauvalel. All right, this is Denmark's guys. Not a problem. Let's just keep moving. I don't know. I may have fluffed something here. Makes me worry now because if I could be confident that this is the case, then I'd be confident that this is where we are. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll just double check on that one. Sometimes it's not all smooth. So we're jumping, guys. We're making the jump. Now I'm going to try in these two hours to do this thing. Two hours, maybe 30 minutes. I don't want this one to go to three hours, though. No. I give you mail. Uh, what we're going to do is financial maths and probabilities. So let's just quickly run through this financial mathematics story. So, all right. So we are told in on January 2022, Pete decided he will. Remember the time, January. He will buy a cottage near the sea in 11 years' time. Okay. That is on December the 31st of December 2032. Now the cottage will cost a whopping 1.8 million rands. He opened a savings account in order to save to buy the cottage. The bank offered an interest of 13% per annum compounded monthly. Those are very key statements already. Pete made his first payment into the account on January 1st, 2022. Do you see this guy? He immediately thought of this and immediately started putting money in. All right, not a problem. Okay, put his first payment on the 1st of January, 2022 and continues with payments at the end of each month. So that means in January, he pays twice at the beginning and at the end until <coughs> sorry <coughs> until the end of that 11 year period okay now the question says i mean look you're projecting into the future he didn't take a loan he decided to save so that's future value right right calculate the effective yearly interest rate of the savings account all right, let's deal with this one. Question six, so this is 6.1. Now, what is the effective interest? You should know that one. This is one plus effective interest being equal to your nominal interest, which is one plus I into N. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. I think, I think so. Because this thing can be a bit of a situation. Of course, they write... What? Maybe I'm not writing this one right. How do you write this one here? They say I am over M. Ne? I. Let's write it again. What is it? It's 1 plus I effective right yeah effective equals the nominal interest formula where are the formulas heaven how not the formula I can't find this thing where is this formula I can assistant cape why do I fall can't eh 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 son I think it's nominal. It's nom, nom over m, meaning months or whatever, and then we're going to take this one and put it there. I think it's something like this. 
And if it is wrong, I am sorry, guys. Ish. Yeah. Stuff happens, you know. This implies what? We want the nominal interest. So basically, I'm sorry, the effective. So that means our effective is going to be whatever this is. Now let's just put in some meat in there. They said the bank is offering 13%. So this is going to be 13 over 100, which is 0 0.13 over. Now this is monthly for a year. And they say per annum, that's a year. An annum is 12 months. Ne? In 2M is going to be the same time frame. Okay. Yeah, we'll go, go, yeah, we'll go, go. And then, of course, we're going to subtract one. It's going to subtract one. Hey, are we subtracting one or adding one? I sobona kona. Sobona kona. But in any case, this whole thing is going to be bigger than one because there's a one adding whatever this is, and we are exponentially increasing it. So it must be some value bigger than one. So let's not worry. Sometimes thinking ahead is a little bit of a problem when you're not thinking straight like me at this point. So I'm getting this thing is so it's a bit big. So we're going to say one zero comma Two, four, eight, one, six. You see with the percentage, you don't want to do anything until you multiply by 100. Then it does it nicely for us. So this is going to be 13, comma, eight. To two decimal places is zero. Percent. The percent. The percent. It's a talent. So do you see the effective interest is 13 percent? Okay. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. Since it's not very far from our answer, I'm sure our equation is okay. It's good. It's good. I think it's grade 11. It's in the textbook for grade 11 somewhere. Check it. But this is not far from what the bank was said to be offering. So we should be in a good position. Okay, guys, we are moving. Now we are really going to start moving. Calculate his monthly payment. So how much must he pay monthly? So with using the future value. But remember here we need a timeline. This thing is important. Hey, without this one, sometimes it becomes a bit cold. It's cold outside. T1. At T1, this guy already paid some money. T0, sorry, not T1. And then at T1, he paid again. That is the end of the first month. Remember, this is from the beginning of the month. He put this money. Then at the end of the, that same month, which is now term one, he put money there. That is end of January 2022. And then he's going to put another amount of money there at the end of February. February. Okay, let's put in maybe three last few ones. So now, what is the number of years here? The number of years above where to is 11. So that means our n is going to be 11 years multiplied by 12. What is that? 11 times 12 is 20. What? I wrote plus now. Eh, this man. This man. Aibo. I'm repeating the same thing. It's contained. Hey. 132. So we're going to have 132 terms. Yes, so. So this is going to be 132 over there. This is T132. This is T131. T130. Okay. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. Ah, uh, yeah. Ne. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Maybe let's say period. This is gonna give us problems. The period, the number of terms here. D N 
yeah let's say tn see your geometric series here is, is coming back tn is going to be that so talking about terms here nothing else and then of course it's going to be paying probably the same amount and then what are they offering these guys 13 percent per annum compounded monthly okay <clears throat> not a big deal so we want to use our future value formula because we have the a value there so we have f is equal to x into 1 plus that 1 to the exponent n minus 1 over that interest rate but now what do we want we want x so that means you will have cross multiplied over there such that you get f multiplied by i divided by this situation here that I would like to run away from. Now let's put the money. It's 1.8 mil. Mm. Some big amount. And then the effective, what is the nominal? Is it nominal interest? Yeah. Kept saying effective, but this is nominal. So 0, 0,13 over 12. Okay. Divide by 1 plus 0, 0,13 over 12. This is 2 exponent now n is is another issue here n is going to be the last one which is 132 minus the first one which is 0 plus 1 to remember when you do that sigma notation thing because there's going to be one extra i mean if you think about it if we're only starting here that would be exactly 132 but now we started already at t0 so there's always going to be 1 plus 1. It's like that sigma notation thing. You know how to do that thing? Yeah. So the number of terms here is going to be 133, basically. Because of that one extra term, of course. We did a double in January. So this is 133 minus 1. Yeah. Hey, begli wan jena. Tenga tigali wala. And this is one eight zero 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 into one three. <laughs> hey, I'm thinking of something else, man. Some people can be silly. They can be silly. When you have a bit of a case and pump in. One three three minus one. Yo, I'm a gubala. Yo, I'm a gubala. Yo, I'm a gubala. This is seven. Seven. Okay. So this person must put out every month six point one seventy-seven cents. Okay, it's not too big, so I'm, I'm okay. So I think the trick here is this guy's here. So sometimes be very careful. You see, when you don't have a timeline, you're going to you're gonna bend. Because all you know is that from 1 to 132 is 132, right? And then you just add the extra one. Even if you didn't do it in that manner, you just look at it like that. And then you just sort it. How many marks? Hey, I'm talking and not doing anything. It's four marks. So I feel correct substitution in general is correct. But to write this one is also correct. To get this number is correct. And then the answer is correct. So we have our four marks. And we are like, thank you, sir. You've been kind indeed. You've been very kind. Eish, I'm wasting time, Buffet. As yes, this guy must just stop. I will try, Buffet, next time to, to do things better because I feel now. Hey, hey, I'm doing a number on people. Pete decides that he will go on holiday to the Kruger National Park. I've never been there, you know. Uh, on 31st December 2026. Hmm. December 31st of 2028. And the 31st, yeah, this guy wants to have fun too. He's crazy. 
Okay, he will withdraw 20,000. Look at this guy. He's saving less and he's taking more. Crazy man. He will withdraw 20,000 from the savings account each time he goes on holiday. Okay. These withdrawals will result in Pete not having the required amount to buy the cottage on the 31st of December 2032. How much will he be short to buy the cottage? Okay. Now, let's see. Well, if he takes money, he loses the compounding power. So, let's do another timeline here to make this situation look great. So, 6.3. This is T0, right? He put X. T1, he put X amount. Let's just forget about that one for a second. And then this is T... 132 he put an X amount then let's see he withdrew money this guy now when he withdrew money he withdrew his first amount on December uh, what was that he withdrew it the first one was on the 31st of December 2026 remember I started in January 2022 so he did a whole year there so it's how many years from 2022 to 2026 of course you have to consider that it's how many years let me just use my fingers now calculator is going to kill me uh it's gonna be this whole year 2022 23 24 25 26 so it's five years okay so that means that is five years so let's see five times 12 we just want the term number so he took this money at term number 60 on his timeline so at term 60 he started taking 20,000 from the amount of money okay and then he did it again sometime later which is uh, 2028 so we have 20, 22 3 4 5 6 seven eight that's seven years so seven years is seven times twelve which is eighty four so he did this in t eighty four twenty twenty eight thirty first at the end of twenty twenty eight so it's two three four six seven eight yeah it's seven years did he seven in that? Did he seven? Okay. I don't know if you know, this thing is big. You can't see it. So here he takes another amount of money. Twenty thousand. Then he does it again at that term. This is now on twenty thirty. 2030 is how many years now? Start again. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30. So it's 9 years. So 9 years. 9 times 12 is T108. Uh, D108 okay so that is cool guys so we can we can actually do our thingies um, and say fine this is the store or oh, he did again 20 days and but nothing changes on the interest is 13% Per annum, monthly, monthly, monthly. So every month he does the very same thing. So, okay, let's just be sure if we're capturing everything as it is supposed to come. So, um, let us see here. Yeah, this 2026 is five years from 2022 considering that we started at the beginning of the year ne? yeah 
and then uh, to 28 because I mean if I say 20 28 minus 20 22 and then of course I have to add 1 every time so plus 1 is going to be 7 years ne? yes yes so um, I think we are fine I think we are fine so these are the little situations that happened here okay so these are the little situations that happen that happened you know certain things happen <laughs> they happen and when they happen certain things happen all right and when they happen those things yeah, you end up taking money that you are supposed to save. Yeah, my calculator confirms that this is correct. So if you have the little timeline between and tabis and and there is our timeline. So it's good. So I hope you can see it. Now, what we are one wanting to calculate how much did he lose? Of course, we know that he will still have all the money that he would keep. How much did he lose? Of course, we know that he will still have all the money that he would keep. But this ones at this term he loses the compounding power from this term going forward and then at this term here he loses that compounding power of that amount of money going forward and then at this term he loses that amount so he loses the three compounding powers so basically what do we need to do we need to say how much money will this have accumulated over the remainder of this time plus the amount of money this particular one would have accumulated for the remainder of that period plus that one that would have accumulated money the remainder of that period so we're going to have here three future values added together so we can say uh, how much will it be short you can just say he will be short this amount of money uh, it's going to be first the future value of the first situation uh, I can just quickly go into that substitution exactly so a future value is going to be 20,000 20,000 plus this one this is 0, 0,13 over 2 12 sorry now how many periods will we lose from t60 to 132 so we're going to say 132 minus 60 so we get 72 terms all right so this is going to be to 72 terms are we happy there we should be uh, minus one hey this is a lot of calculating isn't it calculate calculate uh, no man it's not future value come on can't use future value here because these are discontinuous we just go for geometric sequence we must use geometric sequence so now we're going to add here this is just compound interest for just that period that little thingy so we don't have to use the future value ne? formula just go for the geometric sequence because we just lost compound interest for those situations for that amount of money so we can just focus on that alone we didn't inject something after that one such that we end up with that future value formula but here we just at one instant we lost this then we're just going to have to compound this amount we lost the whole time then we compound that the remainder and then then we add them together so this is going to be 20 score door into one plus uh, uh, 0, 0,1, 3, 2, I mean over 2. Now, this one is T84. What is T84? Just take the last one and say 132 minus 84. We get 48. 48. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Yes, again, I'm afraid. I think I can learn to learn to Financial maths is not my favorite. For this reason, you just have to do a lot of things, man. Why? Why can't you take this one away? But it's important, though. You need to know the money, ne? Yeah, unfortunately. 
that's why I don't know money then that's why it's easy <laughs> to take me astray money wise you know people are recruiting you into some silly investments that don't benefit you at all they just take your money and you're like what how stupid am I trust fools with my money anyway let's go on uh, we're not talking about money per se we're just fantasizing about it uh, this one is 108 so let's see 132 minus 108 is 24 so this is just two years eh? 24 so I think again the trick here if you don't do the timeline properly it becomes a bit challenging to work out what you must do where okay I think it's key anyway let's do it let's do it now let's do this compound interest and add them together because that's the money we're going to lose isn't it yeah to add this go into 1 plus hey, but this section is annoying trust me I I, 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 I I would rather I don't do it but ish, you probably guys need it you know you know let me just try and do all of them at once if my calculator can handle them but if it can't I will see it when it complains 0, 0,13 over 2 while off if it complains then I will abandon it this is going to be 48 plus eh, yeah probably it's gonna scream please calculator don't scream on me man 0 comma 1 2 I mean 3 divide by 12 hey it's not screaming Baba wow <laughs> hey man hey mathematical so I'm getting here hey this guy lost a lot of money a million by just taking 60 grand Yo, these guys come on man I'm losing a million for just taking 60,000 all right so this is one million. Hey, what? What is this money? It's not a million, is it? Oh, I'm saying two gil. We think about a million. I'm just not any other. Just not a so. Hey, this is one hundred and two thousand eight hundred and ninety-five. Hey, I'm saying zero. Show me that. See, I see how much eight nine five comma seven eight okay so this is the amount of money he loses i know i can accept a hundred thousand from sixty at least yeah hey this is calling me this it happy as a nice failure okay all right all right all right so here will be this short this guy this is just the amount of money he loses because if you take 20,000, this 20,000 will have multiplied over these terms to some sort of money. And that one will have, will have multiplied over these terms to make some money. And then that amount, of course, we knew that the whole should give us a 1.8. So essentially, we lose that 102,895. 78 cents and 70. You know, you know, you know. Our Mr. President said it. So I must say it if the president can say it. So they are saying five marks is so, guys. So what is the story here? I think these terms are important. Ne? And then the answers is important. I don't know about where is the five mark, the fifth mark, because they're giving us five marks and I don't understand. Um, maybe we can just say two marks for the answer because, yeah, or maybe for just the setup. Maybe let's say the whole setup, correct substitution in general, but those specific values being important, so maybe five marks. Okay, now let's do the last one here, 6.4. 
6.4 so they are asking the question now calculate how may calculate the new monthly payment into the savings account over the 11 years that he will uh, that will allow Pete to go on his holidays and still buy that house okay great stuff so we already know that well our a value here if we want to think about it, it's gonna be that million 1.8 million plus whatever he was falling short of which is 102895,78 okay let's add those two first so that we can sort our lives just right so this is gonna be 1.8 Ah, 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 ah. It's a hala man plus one oh two um eight nine five comma seven eight. I'm feeling dizzy buff way tang as when So this amount is gonna be one nine zero two eight nine five comma seven eight cents. So this is the amount of money he needs to generate. So we can use our future value formula here. So this follows that um, he's going to have x into 1 plus i to the n minus 1, all that over i. And then of course we want x, x is going to be f multiplied by i, you know how that is done, right? If you don't remember, I, one man, one colla, one swarela. Now this man is this big one now. One ninety actually is one million. Is it nineteen million? Let's see. Let me try to read this this thing. Yeah, it's one million nine hundred and two thousand eight hundred and ninety-five. Hence <laughs> Okay, one ninety sorry, one million nine hundred and two thousand eight hundred uh eight hundred and ninety five hey let me stop talking crap here guys i thought i was gonna be able to do this in just one hour but hey it's not happening you know this is multiplied by our little thingy here interest never changed all of that over 1 plus 0, 0,13. I am feeling tired. Oh, my seat could be lent on so pumped. Over 12. Of course, same period, right? Because we're starting the same way and we're ending the same way. So that means it's going to be 132 plus that 1, which is 133 minus 1. Okay. How much moolah must this guy cough up this time around? So we have 190. Two eight nine five point seven eight into that one, which is um, zero comma one three over twelve. Hour. But this section is boring and it's time consuming. For just a few questions like that, three questions taking a whole thirty minutes. Ah, one has your ah chagya tap. I get up a whole hang. All right, we look at the man now. I'm not going to let Taba already have a little bit. I get up a fella puts a in the ebay woman not to let her tell it. Carabo, how about Haiba? What I didn't do to my hand. Rebat like Carabo man. Tabulous at Taba. You get up by a how, but was wild about Mamudi. So this one must pay six thousand four hundred and fifty nine comma zero three cents. Okay, to two, two, two decimal places, of course. So okay, it's gonna be slightly bigger than the initial one. What did we get the first time around? It was six point one. So you're adding just three hundred. I mean, it's not bad, is it? You see, just a small onion change gives you a lifeline. You can get a house plus have that bit of fun in between I mean, this is cool so that was how many marks three marks okay I think getting this amount first is important 
then we can just simply say here correct substitution into the correct formula basically and then the answer is that one so this is how you could have taken those 15 marks ladies and gentlemen but i think that question one effective interest stuff here this one mm -hmm. yeah whatever man it's like check really memorandum about what yeah it's like check and that and then that is it about financial maths so far so let's run quickly to those probability sections so that we can end this video before it becomes forever long and then we can then enjoy our functions next i think guys i should give you a better preparation for paper one if it does not i'm going to kill you guys all right just gonna kill you okay let's just take this part as well i think this question must go question seven must just go so 7.1 we have f of x is 5x squared minus x plus 3. of course they want us to differentiate this one from the first principles you already know what is the story we know that f prime of x is going to be lim as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h ne? yes lim of h as i mean lim of the limit as h tends to 0 so this is going to be what is f of x plus h where you see x you put x plus h so it's going to be 5 x plus h squared minus x plus h over there and then of course plus 3 okay minus <laughs> it's long this thing here you then put that f of x as it is 5x squared minus x plus 3 all right all over h so this is the limit as h tends to 0 now we fold things out, so this is going to be 5 into x squared plus 2xh plus h squared ne, minus x minus h plus 3 and then we deal with this one is minus 5x squared plus x minus 3. Then of course these ones already attack each other and because they are matched they disappear so that we can shorten our expression here as h tends to zero please repeat this thing as often as you see it because if you don't marks will be taken away so if all this one out is going to be 5x squared plus 10xh plus 5h squared then we have here minus 5x squared left and then this one and that one do a number on each other and they disappear. Lim as h tends to zero. Yeah, this thing is boring though. This is now 10xh plus 5h squared all over h. All right, lim as h tends to zero. Don't give up guys, almost there. So this is h, by the way, yeah. h is what we need out so this is 10 x plus uh, 5 h ne? all over h and then that one goes this is the limb of h going to 0 of 10 x plus 5 h now we are at Liberty. Ha 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 ha. When they get done, they like, come on. Something is missing. Mm. Something is missing. But wait, son. You wanna go? You do so much work, and then something is not where it's supposed to be. There's an H that is missing here. I missed an H. Remember here we would get a minus H. So this H will one malal. 
so there's a minus h here minus h is so and then here then there's gonna be a minus one so forget this one is there there's a minus one when we factorize that thing okay then we have a minus one here okay great and then we have um, this now tells us that we have 10x minus 1 plus 5 into 0. Now you can substitute, which is going to be equal to 10x minus 1. And then we already know that when you do the differential, it's going to be 10x minus 1. Right. So that's the answer. So when it gets a bit hot, a lot of things happen. Then you start to miss things. But your answer will guide you if you already look at it. Okay, guys, this is easy. I'm not even going to try and be fancy about it. There's no need to stress over this one. Now, we're going to do differentiation. Of course, the format that they give you, you stick with it, all right? They are saying here we are to differentiate this situation. Here, you know that we have to foil the inside first before we can do the differentiation. We must have terms to do that. So 7.2, we have k, whatever that is, 2t minus 1 into t plus 4. I mean, guys, this one is one area where if you're doing this paper, you want to start here and collect your 13 marks, then you, you don't have to really suffer anyway which we can continue say d whatever that is we fold this out it's going to be 2t squared then we're going to have here minus we're going to have plus 8t minus t which is going to be plus 7t then minus 1 times 4 is minus 4 okay we are good i hope we did well if we did not too bad Anyway, so we have this little situation here. Of course, this one, once we do the differentiation here, we don't have to write this thing. So all of what we have here is equal to, then it's going to be 4t plus 7. Yeah, this is 4t plus 7. That's the answer. So how many marks? You're getting the 3 marks. Of course, I feel that the Three marks is one mark is for falling that out and then for each one of these two. Mosomung into a while. Let's just get rid of this question. I I don't like it. So I don't even want to go around the bush. Otherwise I'm not doing it. This one is one that you should just know how to do. Bafuet. Bafuet. So remember here, there's a, a bit of a catch on this one, yeah. There's a bit of a catch here. Because now if this is dq in terms of p, that means we have to solve for q in that equation. So this equation, okay, we have 9p squared minus 3pq minus q equals 1. So all we need before to here is to do this equation in terms of q. This implies that q is going to be equal to 9p squared minus 3p. I'm messing up, getting too excited. Okay, this implies that we have here, let's just first start 9p squared. And then here we have a common factor which is q so we just group those two together and we take the highest common factor the highest common factor here is going to be q so it's going to be minus q into we get here 3p plus 1. so this is a very tough question a bit okay it's not very tough but it's technical so here you have to get the highest common factor, which is Q, so that you isolate that P. Hey, 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 Buffett and Sega, Benin and Ah, 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 ah. Nisega, be. Ninga Saba, Lady Nase, Kayan. Binkin Bizoba, Kapu Kapu, and Togantika Fiwa. 
So we have here q into 3p plus 1. Ne? If we transpose it to that side equals and then we transpose 1 to that side and just rearrange. going to be 9p squared minus 1. Then we want to isolate q, right? Because there's a q in there. So the format always gives you a guide. Hoo, hoo, hoo. 3p all right uh, that one goes so we will have here q because we need an equation in terms of q ne? i hope i'm not lying guys yeah, yeah, yeah. what's about towards in what's about towards in this silly hump but we have a difference of two squares here at the top ne? so if we Okay, let's just write it first. 9p squared minus 1 over 3p plus 1. Of course, you can't differentiate when you still have this one. Nine can be split into 3p minus 1 into 3p plus 1, right? dots 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 so you have to recognize this one 3p plus 1 then this one and that one they fight and finally we have q equals 3p minus 1 yes son you can say therefore differentiation of q in terms of p is going to be equal to we do that one it's gonna be what 3 Hey, Quaffi, Waba Fed. Yo, 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 yo. Ange, Kange, Kange, Kange. Sing to the Gaga cool, sing man's in tea. Sing man's in tea, come on. We move it, we move it. We move it, we move it, we move it, we move it. Okay, guys, um, just get these papers out of my face. They're just all over here now. I've been throwing them too close. Oh, I say my name's in a man. So, I'm a man. Yo! Very badly, um. Give us a challenge. I can't even throw it in. Wow, 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 wow. I can't even throw it in. I'm a challenge. 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 All right, guys. Uh, yeah, eh? See, I'm a boy. See, I keep. Okay. We continue guys uh, let's do the probability hey, i think we're gonna get to that three hour mark that i was trying to run away from i didn't want to do three hours you know but it happened what can you do what can you do now question 10 says a survey was conducted among 220 students that means it's our sample size at a university the results are shown below okay 40 students study physical science, fine. 117 study mathematics. 90 study commercial subjects. Okay, they call them sciences now, okay. 21 students study physical sciences, so everything has become a science, right? And commercial sciences, okay. 153 study mathematics and commercial sciences. 12 students study physical sciences and mathematics. 50 students do not study physical science, ma uh, sciences, mathematics, or commercial substance. Yeah, commercial science is not substances. Yeah, one. I'm already thinking physical science, chemistry now. X students study physical sciences, mathematics, and commercial sciences. Now copy the Venn diagram given below in your answer book, and then represent the above information on it. Okay, they've already done it for us, so I'm just going to continue here. I'm not going to stress myself. All right, so we already have x. Of course, every time you have a Venn diagram, you start at the confluence of all, then you work your way out, okay? Intersections first, then the little carvens last, okay? Uh, so what do we know? We know that there's how many students who do physical science for it. Okay, let's not start there. Let's start at the intersections. We already have one here. 
so 50 do not okay let's forget 50 is here so that one is out we can deal with it quickly and forget it for now and then we're told here 12 students study physical sciences and maths okay there they are so it's 12 but remember there's also those who also do what commercial sciences as well so they are a part of this intersection so how do we eliminate these ones we subtract them from the 12 there so that's going to be minus x maybe let me use a much smaller pen this thing is filling up the entire space but maybe because that one is the smallest okay it's fine that's minus x so we have to take away these ones who do commerce as well as others so we only want those that only do maths and physics ah. now let's do this one here how many do uh, maths and commercial subjects there's 53 students okay here there's 53 now what is the story here there is also guys who are doing remember here they include this x so we must remove those ones from here yeah. as well so we're getting 53 minus x and then what is the other story there then 92 commercial no 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 21 do physical sciences and commercial subjects so this is 21 but now here we need to exclude those guys there so we're going to take away those ones so that we remain with only those that do the two ah. ne. so that only those that do all three are there and then now we can work our way out into the outskirts so how many were doing physics 40 so it's going to be 40 minus these little ones here you see this little thingy here so let's just go for it and then we're going to have first 40 Okay, maybe let's not write 40 let's just work it out here we do need to work it out a little bit so we're going to have here 40 minus 12 minus x minus x and then minus this one okay be careful when you have negatives they will 100% deal with you so this is going to be 40 minus 12 plus x minus x uh, minus 21 plus x so this x and that x cancel then we deal with the numbers so this is going to be 40 minus 12 minus 21 I get 7 so this is 7 plus x that is what remains so this is 7 plus x okay here you have to do some calculations otherwise you're gonna be in trouble all right that is fine sorted and then let's see what is the next one 117 study mathematics okay now when we deal with the maths guys we have to remove the intersection of course so we're going to say here we have 117 minus 12 minus x minus x minus 53 minus x okay negatives you need to put brackets or else you're going to be in a situation that you don't really desire so minus 12 plus x and distribute there minus x minus 53 plus x when you distribute this so of course these ones immediately cancel then let's deal with the numbers so it's 117 minus 12 uh, minus 53 hey layers so it's 52 minus a plus x because again I like what Okay, the last one so they are telling us there's 90 students studying commercial sciences only so now we're going to have 90 minus the intersection remember that intersection must go away oh sorry this one this one must go okay 
um, so it's going to be yeah, minus 21 minus x minus x it intersects that one minus it intersects this one is 53 minus x okay so this is going to be equal to 90 minus 21 plus x minus x minus 53 plus x so what do we get so it's going to be 90 minus 21 uh, minus 53 I get 16 of course uh, these ones immediately take each other out so there's gonna be plus X so this is 16 plus X all right guys our Venn's diagram is sorted they wanted us to do it so we did it so we get our four marks okay um yeah we get our four marks First of all, I think working out what is in the circles is a mark. Putting this 50 where it belongs is a mark. And working out these little intersections is another mark. Uh, maybe we have to indicate that the sample size is 220. Maybe that is where the mark comes from. I don't know. We have to consider the sample size. All right. Not a problem. So let's go on. It says calculate the value of x if the number of students that study all three courses. Sorry, calculate the value of x, the number of students that study all three courses. Okay. If you don't mind, I would like to answer this one here. So we just add all of these things up to 220. Ne? So we're going to start here and say 50 from this one. We're going to start outside in. Plus 52, plus 3, okay. Plus 7. Where is the 3 coming from? This is x. Yeah, ne? Monday, I may say cartel. That is x, ne? Not 3. And then plus 7 plus x. When you have pluses, plus 16 plus x. So when you have pluses, you just don't panic. But here, yeah, it's going to be plus 12 minus x plus 53 minus x plus 21. <laughs> minus x this thing is terrible you know and then plus x is equal to 220 yo okay now let's clean this one up a little bit it's a bit of a mess now let's start with the numbers 50 plus 52 plus 7 plus 16 plus 12 plus 53 plus 21 equals 211 so we have this is this implies this is an equation right this implies that 211 plus let's see how many x's do we have 1 2 3 okay and then we're gonna take 1 2 3 out so only one remains, so it's plus x equals 220. Okay, so not a problem. Therefore, our x is going to be 220 minus 211, which is 9. So our x is 9. All right, my foot. Okay, not a problem. So you can check. I am tired now. You can put the 9 in there and then you put the 9 where you see x and then work out all of those values they must all add up to 220 but I would assume that since we took this from 220 it should work but the problem is that these numbers are too many here there's very there's a very good chance of actually picking the wrong one or missing a digit and then you end up with the wrong answer so that is why you want to check because you don't want to lose marks 
for no absolute reason. So let's do this 10.2 here also. The 10.3. Just do it here. Ten point three says, if a student was selected at random, calculate the probability that he or she studies only one of the courses: physical sciences, maths, or commercial subjects. Of course, if that is the case, it is basically the probability of either P or M or C. Okay, we're just going to add those probabilities. First of all, this is now what? Let's just work it out. <coughs> Where is my color? Where is my other pen? I want another color to write with. Uh, so, uh, so that we can have ourselves a lovely thingy there. So, what we're going to do here, we're going to say 9. Plus 7 is 16. Then here we have 52 plus 9, 61. And then we have here 16 plus 9, which is 25. So we're just going to do these values here. This is going to be 16 for physics over the total, which is 220. Plus, when there's an OR, you know that you add those probabilities. This one is 61 over 220 plus 25 over 220. You know the denominator is the same. So you just add those numbers. 25 plus 16 plus 61. So that is 102. Okay. Let's see, 102 divided by 220 gives us a 51 over 110, okay? Now, when you do this, it becomes a mess. So, you can still express probability as a fraction. So, rather stay safe and leave it here, okay? So, basically, here it's just a substitution of these probabilities and the answer. You have your mark. All right, guys, that is... Fine. We keep it moving. Ria yi supa. Ri khanna kolo inta tere khanna jual re khanna. So me will tell you that um, we are almost done. But I think three hours perfect ended up finishing. I, I can't believe I've been working for three hours. Eh? It's like doing what I do for a living. Eh? Get in. Didn't see the sun. You come out, it's dark outside again. Oh, doch. It's bad. Okay, let's see. Question 11. Let's say now the coach of a first hockey team wants to take a photo of his team. Okay. Now, there are 11 players so that's the number of players here in his team where the captain mm -hmm, the vice captain and other five players are in grade 12 okay so how many players are in grade 12 he saw they are seven and the four others are in grade 11 so there's just four grade 11 and it says the grade 11 players are placed randomly you see the grade 11 so no 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 the 11 all of them are placed randomly in a row to take a photo okay all of them okay how many in how many different ways can the coach move the 11 players for the first photo okay there's a first photo here if the captain should not sit at one of the ends okay now, how I do this one, folks, can I do it on the question paper? Simply, though. Please. Uh, okay, it's going to stay in the question paper. That's fine. All right, so 11.1. So we have 11 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Uh many spots one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven 
Okay, <clears throat> so now we want these 11 players such that the captain does not sit at one of the ends. So that means of the 11, we have 10 options here. Once we make our pick for the last one, we will have nine options. Ne? And then the captain can be put anywhere. So once we take out these two, then we can have here, um, how many options now? Nine. Again. Wait a minute. Why did I say nine? Yeah, we take the captain out, we have ten players. Put one there, and then we put the other one there, so there was nine left. Then the captain joins in, so we have nine players again. So it's going to be nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So this is exactly how it was going to go. So now you look at this one, you simplify because you multiply these possibilities. So now this is going to be exactly 10 multiplied by 9 factorial. If you look at this one, it's from 9 to 1 multiplied by 9. Let's just do this calculation nice and easy. So this is 10 times 9 factorial times 9. Yo, 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 yo. Let me try to read this number. What is this one? This is 32,000, sorry, 32 million, 659,200. Okay. <clears throat> of course, ways or different ways. They said in how many ways? So, this is the number of different ways that we can do this one. Okay easy stuff, two marks. I do think this expression in the answer is enough, 11.2. Yeah, ne? I'm going to give a fit of three hours, pelle kum, sends into one, yeah, few one. 11.2, for the second photo, the captain and the vice captain must, so now this is the second story, so we are done with that one. The captain and the vice captain must sit in any order. It's a must. It's not a matter of they can. It's a must, Baba. It's the law. Sit in. Okay, they must sit in any order in the fifth and the sixth chair. All right. So let's first deal with the situation here. So we have eleven players. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is the two seats, the fifth and the sixth. Isn't it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. Now those are the fifth and the sixth chairs. So these guys are two, right? It's the vice and his captain. So it's going to be two factor, I mean, two possibilities for one chair and one possibility for the other. Of course, this one's multiplied, but this one is fixed. It does not move. And then the rest, they can jump around. Ne? Okay, let's leave this one for now. They can jump around like a madman, man. So here, first of all, we have, what, nine options? No, yeah, two. Yeah, nine, eight, seven six five four three two one so that is what we have here basically from just the statement that they're giving us now they're asking a question what is the probability that a grade 12 player oh further restrictions grade 12 player will sit on the first chair okay and a grade 11 player will sit on the last chair yeah now there's a bit of a situation again because they told us that these were random initially. They first, they first put this restriction. Now we have another silly situation here. Let's try and figure it out, guys. Um, so we still have this 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay. So, of course, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, this one, we have these guys. They are fixed here. They are fixed. Okay. Now, they're saying that the probability is that the first, I mean, the great 11, I mean, the great 12 player sits on the first chair. So, there were seven grade 11, I mean grade 12 players, the captain and his vice, plus the five others. So now we've fixed these two, so we have five possibilities for this first stint here. Then the last one, there were just four, so we're going to put the four over there. There's four possibilities, and then the rest, they just come in and take part in everything. So how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so it's going to be seven... Six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, not a problem. So this is the situation now that we need to find the probability of, okay? But how was this first picture in general, randomly? It is like this. So hey, these guys were really punishing you guys, eh? Yeah, they were, they were, they were dealing with you. They were dealing with you, with you, huh? Ah, I'm gonna deal with, with them as well all right um yeah ne? so we need to first deal with this situation this is multiply 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 so basically it's five here times now you can see this is from seven to one in that order so this is seven factorial multiplied by this is 2 factorial I mean 2 factorial is effectively just 2 and then multiplied by 4 so this is exactly this probability we are trying to get here so I'm not going to say I'll just say p event is going to be equal to because this is crazy now what would be the total the total is when we're not fixing these two except for the captain because these ones are the ones that we've fixed so this is our total this time don't focus on the total from above it is a different scenario these two these two chairs are fixed and these are randomly placed around it and yet now for the probability of this event occurring in this situation we have to consider this new restriction then here what do we have we have two factorial multiplied by moving from 9 in that order to 1 so this is 9 factorial all right yeah I, this one was a bit challenging i can tell you but maybe you saw it you guys are smart hey, sometimes we underestimate how great you guys are 5 times 7 factorial sometimes we ignore the fact that you guys are geniuses you know Sometimes you can teach me a thing or two, you know, you can even do a number on me. <laughs> you know what? So I've wait. But you just say and call but you would even idea what when Zagalani la So that if you are a little bit troubled by this then it ceases to become such a big problem. But if it is not then it offers you yet an alternative to fortify your already strong mental ability. All right, guys, so I'm going to stay safe and leave it as a fraction. But if they dictate, I can. But they didn't say. I mean, probability can express it as a fraction. You can express it as a decimal or a percentage. So whatever you do here, you're not going to be punished. Okay. Now, this six marks really had to come from somewhere, ne? I think first of all you can get a mark for that structure and I think you will get a mark for these two positions that we want um, um, what else and what else Okay, the substitution into the correct formula, the answer. Here. How many marks now? One, two, three, four. And they are giving you six. A sun. Oh yeah. Oh yeah.
this is a mark as well so one two three four five yeah one two three four five six so yeah six marks all right guys this is how these eight marks i mean the last six marks was not quite an evident story here but uh, if you if you do this more often you realize that you will pretty much figure it out and this is the section you don't want to do when you've already been boxed by functions being boxed by financial meds being boxed by some question one or two questions that are probably difficult this is the stuff you want to get out of the way while your mind is still fresh you do this thing then you are done because now when you get to algebra your brain is already eating algebra is already dreaming algebra and seeing algebra so you just go there and take your time to do it but these ones are the things you want to do first before you think of anything before you get demotivated by anything that you hope you're gonna score marks on i mean a lot of students know functions so well that they know they carry a lot of marks and they're hoping for some fun day and now when you get stones in there you start to cry by the time you get here you can't think straight and then you give up even the time is against you ne? so start with these short questions they can be technical as well but you'll still be fresh to do them because 80 percent of those function related questions you will know how to answer them without even thinking twice it's just one or two questions where you'll have to think a lot and at times not even be able to reach the answer but you see if you cover all these bases first then you don't have to worry about time you don't have to worry about because you're going to get a distinction and A plus is in your hands alright guys before I talk a lot of gibberish uh, thank you very much for your patience to watch this video to the end it's going to be a long one of course 3 hours and you'll find in the description uh, the link to the part 2 which is going to be functions I'm going to do all of them at once so that we can end this question 1 sorry paper one of the northwest which i felt was more of an exam type of a paper rather than a trial paper but either way those who did it and struggled they know exactly where they are they will do better in the final which hopefully will not be as brutal as this paper okay i think this paper is hard but it's not too hard to handle okay bye bye guys i'll see you in the next video